Welcome back everyone, Dr. Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com, going over lesson 6.13 today. In this lesson we're going to talk about carboxylic acid derivatives reacting with carbon or hydrogen centered nucleophiles. Now these carboxylic acid derivatives could include carboxylic acids themselves, esters, amides, acid chlorides, anhydrides, and we're going to start off talking about the reaction of an ester, having this group, with this reactant. Now, I hope you'll remember from way back in the very first lesson on organometallics and metal hydrides, lesson 5.1, this compound is dibal H. Now, dibal H is less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride. In fact, if we use dibal H as the hydride source and keep the temperature low, usually we do this reaction at minus 78 degrees centigrade, that's the temperature of dry ice as a bath to keep the reaction cold, we can add one and only one hydride nucleophile to the ester. This is going to proceed in a nucleophilic acyl substitution type reaction mechanism where the first thing we do is attack with the hydride nucleophile getting us to our intermediate species like this. And then of course we have this aluminum piece floating around. Let's just abbreviate that as aluminum. We can have the alkoxide coordinate to that aluminum and the organic piece that we get then is the aldehyde. So the net result is that you have replaced, substituted the OR group for the H. That is an example of a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, and that's a very specific reaction that occurs between esters and dibal H specifically. Now some carbonyl groups, especially those that react with a more reactive nucleophile, will react by what we call in this book a type C reaction which means we do a type B reaction, the nucleophilic acyl substitution I just showed you, then a type A reaction, which is nucleophilic addition protonation. Let me go through the process mechanistically of how this works. If I have a really reactive nucleophile, I'll attack the carbonyl, I'll get my initial intermediary species where the nucleophile has added, and we have the Y group and the R double prime still. We then have nucleophilic elimination where we push off some type of leaving group. So we have some sort of leaving group coming off, and one equivalent nucleophile has added. That is the nucleophilic acyl substitution process from there to there. But if we have a really reactive nucleophile and we have enough of it floating around, we can do nucleophilic addition. And that's the first step of what we have learned as the part A reaction. Now remember that this type of reaction happens with an H- minus or an R- minus type nucleophile if we start with an aldehyde or ketone. And I just want to point out, if I take an amide or a carboxylic acid or an ester or any of these functional groups, right, let's just pretend that we have any functional group, and we've replaced Y with a nucleophile. If we're using an H or an R nucleophile, then this is an H or an R at this point, which means we have an aldehyde or ketone. We already know the aldehyde or ketone will do this very nucleophilic addition if we have these types of nucleophiles. We add some proton source, could just be water, protonate this, and after the whole thing is said and done, the net result is we've added two nucleophiles in place of the leaving group, right, that bond is gone, and the pi bond. All right, so two bonds needed to be made up for, for the carbon, and we made those up by adding two nucleophiles. Let me give you some specific examples of type C reactions. We can take a carboxylic acid, an ester, or an acid chloride, react it with a hydride nucleophile that has to come from lithium aluminum hydride, the most reactive of our hydride sources. Remembering that lithium aluminum hydride has four hydrides on it, so it's not just one H that it can provide. So we do the nucleophilic addition. We get the tetrahedral intermediate, and we kick out this leaving group, that leaving group being OH minus, OR minus, or Cl minus, any of which can form a salt with aluminum or lithium in the final products. Now we have this species of the intermediate, and we have just made an aldehyde. Well, if we have hydride nucleophiles floating around, at least four of them from one equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride, we already know from way back in our first discussion of the reactivity of hydrides that a hydride can easily add to the aldehyde, followed by protonation to give you as the final product in this case a primary alcohol. 
Now we also have these R- nucleophiles. They can come from organolithium or Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents, remember, being R, M, G, X. These reactions will work if we have esters or acid chlorides by really the same exact mechanistic pathway we showed on the previous page. But you'll see that I add an R nucleophile once, R nucleophile twice. So in the end, we've added two R groups. We already had one. So we get a tertiary alcohol instead of a primary alcohol. Now, you could have this R being an H through the whole process, in which case you could hypothetically make a secondary alcohol, but usually you'll get a tertiary alcohol from this type of process. One thing you might have noticed is that in discussing the carboxylic acid derivatives, I mentioned carboxylic acids, I mentioned esters, I mentioned acid chlorides, I didn't mention amides. We'll deal with those in another lesson because there's some strange different type of things that amides do that aren't common to these other carboxylic acid derivatives.